In this video, I'm going to talk about a few considerations you might want to think about if you are choosing a pair of running shoes uh, when you have an Achilles tendon problem. My name is Steph, I'm one of the physios at TreatMyAchilles.com where you can get an online assessment uh, for your injury and an individualised rehab plan. If this is something that interests you, then please take a look at the description of this video and the link to our website is in there. So when I talk about Achilles problems at the moment, and for this, the purpose of this video, I'm talking about like Achilles tendon overuse problems such as tendinopathy or sometimes people call it tendonitis, um, possibly bursitis or Hagland's problems. And it's a common question we get asked as physios of what sort of shoes should I wear? And the first thing I will say is if you have a problem, rather than just changing your shoes, you probably should get someone to look at it because there might be something very simple that you can do that will help sort it out. And the sooner you sort it out, the quicker it gets better. If you try and do things that don't work for longer, then it takes longer to get better. So get it sorted as quickly as possible. The second thing I will say before we delve into different types of shoes is that the shoe you choose has to be comfortable. There is absolutely no point in going to run on a treadmill and have a video taken, choose a perfect pair of shoes on paper for you to hate them and never want to wear them, which has happened to me in the past, which is why I say it. Uh, they've got to be comfortable because otherwise it defeats the whole purpose and, and is pointless really. Anyway, so now we'll talk about the drop that the millimetres of heel to toe drop that you'll see a lot of information about when you're looking at a pair of running shoes. So what we're talking about here is the difference in height between the heel, the sole, the, uh, sole of the shoe at the heel versus the sole of the shoe at the, the forefoot. And the drop is measured in millimetres and you'll see um, four, like this is a Saucony Kinvara, that's a four millimetre drop. So that's fairly flat actually. So four millimetres still counts as a fairly minimalist shoe. You quite often get people wearing the ultra zero drop shoes. They're very comfortable, the wide toe box, people like them a lot. Um, they have a zero drop shoe, which means it is totally flat. The standard running shoe is probably about eight millimetre drop. Um, and you can get some that are even up at sort of 12 mils. And the reason this is relevant for an Achilles problem is they know from kinematic and um, biomechanical research that the flatter the drop, um, the more stress and load actually gets put through the Achilles tendon and to some degree the plantar fascia and the metatarsals and your calf. So when you're running in a flat or a zero drop shoe, you naturally are requiring more of your Achilles tendon. So it doesn't mean you can't get back to running in a zero drop shoe, but it might take you longer to get the strength and conditioning in your Achilles and your calf good enough to tolerate it if you've had problems. Or we commonly do see people who have developed problems because they do not have the conditioning in the Achilles and the calf required to tolerate a zero drop shoe. So it is relevant. Um, the other thing about a zero drop shoe is whether or not you have enough range of movement in your ankle. So for someone who has a very stiff ankle um, and can't passively dorsiflex it very far, you might actually be better with a little bit of support to compensate for the fact that the ankle is stiff. For someone who has lots of range of movement, then you probably can tolerate a zero drop shoe just fine. Um, the next thing to consider is not then all about getting a really thick, thick heeled shoe because actually you want to consider the rest of your body. So everybody is a bit different. Some people have issues elsewhere. So perhaps knee pain or hip pain or back pain. And the reason zero drop shoes are so popular is because it takes more loads on your Achilles, but takes less load on some of the other body parts. So there's no good trying to protect your Achilles going into a, um, a thicker uh, drop shoe to find that you end up hurting your knees or something else that has more strain on it as a result. Um, the other thing to consider with Achilles is lots of different trainers have different sort of hardness of their heel cup and if you're not sure you can have a feel of it. So this is particularly relevant for people with bursitis. Um, I've noticed certainly some shoes come up quite high at the back now, so that can actually physically dig into the mid tendon in your Achilles if you've got a problem. And then sometimes it's quite, especially if shoes get a bit worn out um, and are starting to come apart a little bit, you can get hard areas 
uh, develop in the heel cup, which can physically dig in to the insertion area, or they can just, it can be stiff and squeezing on the area, causing friction on the area. So if there's like an actual physical reason that the area is getting irritated, then that obviously needs to change. And the final thing I would say about um, if you put, for instance, some heel lifts into a trainer to try and increase that drop and offload the Achilles, it can just push the heel up into the wrong bit of the shoe. So just watch out for that in terms of rubbing around the insertion as well. I hope that has given you a vague idea of what you should do when you're looking for trainers um, after having had an Achilles problem. But um, it is all about comfort as well and what you enjoy running in. Um, and if you have any problems, then it is much better to get someone to look at it and give you a proper plan to getting you back on the road.